Hello, my name is Lily Quain. I'm a fashion designer and a sewing instructor or sewing coach. Today I want us to go through a very important lesson, which is the basics of the sewing machine. This would be ideal for a complete beginner, one who probably has never touched the sewing machine or doesn't know what anything means or does on the sewing machine. So first, we're going to go through the parts of the machine. And um, that's the upper part, all the dials on it, what they mean, what they do, as well as the lower part, um, the base of the machine, and the parts that you don't often see on the outside. That's uh, where we have the bobbin and so on. Okay. The sewing machine, this particular one is a uh, Singer Heavy Duty Series. What that means is there are a, a number of different kinds in the same heavy duty family. We have 4411, which means it has 11 designs. When I say designs, right here, you can see this dial. It has a number of designs around it. This one is the 4423, means that it has 23 designs. There's another kind that has 44, that is 4432. That means it has 32 designs and on and on, okay? If you are thinking about which kind should I get, what particular machine do I do? I go for a brother, do I get a singer? It really doesn't matter if this is your first time. Any machine that you have, as long as it's a basic beginner machine, it will work. But I tend to use this as beginner teaching because it is very durable, number one. You wouldn't break it as much. It is also very manual. It's not too electronic so that you'll be getting error messages and things like that, you know. It has detachable parts that you can work with. So it is really user-friendly. That said, let's get um, acquainted with the various parts. Now, if you look at the top part, like here, there are three dials, one, two, and three. The one on the extreme right is the width, is the width dial. It goes from zero to six, I believe, yes, zero to six. And then there's the middle one, which is the needle position dial, and that you can only see three needle positions. There's one towards the extreme left, then there's the middle, and then there's the extreme right. For the most part, you will keep the needle on the, in, on the middle position. So you don't really move it. We go to the extreme right or the extreme left only when we're working with um, maybe a zipper you need to get to the right side of the zipper or the left side of the zipper, but that's later. And then there's this one here. This is called the tension dial. The good thing is it's all written on the machine so you can tell uh, um, what each dial stands for. There's also a dial on the side of the machine, which is right here, the right side of the machine. This is called the hand wheel. We turn the hand wheel to the front or towards you, and you can see the needle going up and down. That's what this dial on the right side of the machine does. And then we have the length also. The length is another dial. This gives you the length of the stitches that you're going to be using. So you position it on number four, that will be the longest stitch, number three, kind of medium, number two is a small, and number one is a very small stitch. In fact, sometimes we even go on to um, 
in between one and zero they're very short little stitches if you put it on zero it just stitches at one place it doesn't move so if you're trying to work your machine and you don't know what's happening because this is on zero it means the machine is just stitching in one spot you have to check and put it on between two and three or at best three which is the average that I usually start students on that's it let's look at the um, the design sorry stitch selector um, dial where you have all the designs you can see it begins with straight stitching and then double straight and then zigzag and a plethora of other designs all the way to a buttonhole um, design here this machine is very very versatile you can take it from a zero knowledge of machine use in other words a beginner all the way to a pro a lot of people use it in between beginner and or novice and a pro and it takes you that far that's how good this machine is but when you don't know or understand the parts that go into working or how they work it can be a nightmare so another other parts at the top are the spool pins this is a horizontal spool pin and what is a spool pin a spool pin we use um, to carry or suspend the spool of thread on it so the horizontal one goes on it horizontally and then there's another one that is vertical and it's right here Okay, as you can see, it stands. All right, so we're going to we're going to go on and talk about the various parts. Apart from the dials, there's also what we call thread guides. When you're threading it, it has. places that it's supposed to pass through okay there are areas that the, the thread is supposed to pass through and they make it so easy for you to thread by numbering these thread guides so you can see there's number one over here that is the very first thread guide it begins from where the thread spool of thread is right and then it comes all the way through number one number two is in the corner here and then it continues down to number three number three and this is you see the space here it goes through those spaces and then continues from three to number four number four is um the arrow turns up okay so it's telling you to come back up and then you see number five over here and number five represents a, 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 another gadget that you will see inside while we thread i will show you and then we continue and always follow, follow the arrow okay always follow the arrow and then continue down to number six and number six points to the hook above the needle there's this hook above the needle and then there's the needle itself and that's where you begin to thread the needle from front to back and once the, once the, the needle is threaded you're ready to um, get onto the bottom part okay and you proceed from there to thread the bottom as well okay so there are thread guides there are spools there are spaces now there's a couple of spaces that I would like, or a thread guys that I would like to talk about. And the first one is this part here, number five. There's this metal thing here, okay? It's called a take-up lever. It's shaped, hopefully, you know, you can see it. Now, it is controlled by the hand wheel here, this hand wheel. When you turn the hand wheel towards you, it controls the take-up lever. 
see right now is hidden is down I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me and then you will see the lever come up I keep turning always turn towards you I keep turning and you go down and then come back up what that process is is that it's trying to pull the thread from the spool through the tension to the needle it is the one that feeds thread to the needle based on the tension that allows um, the thread to pass to the needle in other words how much or how little thread is fed to the needle depends on the tension here's the tension right here okay now this tension is very important you see different numbers and you have to know how they relate to the whole um, sewing process the tension is set by the manufacturer at four four is a very good position for many fabrics and for many projects so you're not trying to change this number too much unless you're working on very heavy fabrics like leather or blankets or folds of denim then you might want to release the tension a little bit but even that um, I from experience I don't recommend that you bother the tension dial keep it at four and life is good okay let's begin to thread so I take my thread turn it slightly this way so you would see the path so this is number one I put the thread inside number one okay and then number two is this metal bar here I go under and there's a little plate a very tiny plate let me show you okay you can see the plate on the side of that number two you let the thread sit inside that plate and then okay and continue through the groove continue through the groove here here and then come down from three from three to the to number four three represents the need um, the tension you don't want to um, because they don't want to expose the tension it's just a disc in there you don't see the tension physically some old older models have the tension outside and people tend to mess with it so this is a kind of version that doesn't even expose the tension at all it's only represented by a dial which is fine so when you grab your thread all you're doing is going through number three and then you hit number four and like I said you have arrows and you have numbers so when you hit number four you see number four has an arrow pointing back upwards so you just bring your thread back up and that's where you encounter number five which is the take-up lever you want to make sure that your take-up lever is up and standing out like this you use the hand wheel on your right to do that and you bring your thread to the side okay to the right side of the take up lever and you turn just like number five arrow is showing you turn and bring it back up and there's a groove behind it that allows the thread to go in because number five is actually a hole you can see there's a hole there it needs to get inside that hole okay and then continues the path once it's hooked inside the hole you can continue if you miss that hole you wouldn't be sewing it will just make a loud noise and stop because it has nothing pulling the thread to the needle okay so it's very important to make sure that first of all your take up lever is up and out like this and then your thread goes following the direction of the arrow you just go around in the back and continue your journey down to number six number six is 
this this big hook here there's this big hook hopefully you can see it okay it's a bigger hook here and you just grab your thread and go around it okay if you didn't see it let me do it again okay so you're here at number six right you bring your thread to number six you go in you're still in the groove bring it down and go around this big metal and there's a space it's kind of shaped something like this so the thread is on the inside of it so you go behind it and it's there and then before you thread your needle there's a hook above the needle there's a small hook this one there's this hook here in most machines it's either a smaller hook or it's something right under underneath the needle clump this is the needle clump is the one holding the needle this thing here hopefully it is tight and fixed inside your machine if ever you have to change the needle you could google or youtube and see how to replace the needle that's when you would need to unwind this uh, needle clump otherwise it should be fixed and sturdy and then you grab the thread from number six and let it go through the second hook which is right above the needle let me put the machine down and sometimes you need both hands to do that you will grab the thread and you go in like that okay you go in like this and then let it go let me do it again i'm going to bring my thread out it's already on number six the metal here i just grab hold it for the left and the right like this and then bring it to this hook and pull it down now it's ready to be threaded by the uh, to be taken on by the needle because the needle has a hole in front of it you want to thread it by letting this thread tail go front to back inside the hole now sometimes it's hard to see the hole so I always recommend that you keep a piece of white paper inside your um, compartment over here this is a, it's a little compartment here let me show you it's a little compartment in front here so you keep you know handy stuff in there that helps so i always keep a white paper there like this and this is what i use it for so with this white paper Once you put the paper behind the needle, you will see the hole. You can even see the hole right now, right? Okay, you want to just put it behind. Sorry, the camera is shaking for whatever reason. All right, so you make sure your thread tail is sharp and crisp, not brushy. All right, and then you go from front to back you're able to see the hole very clearly once you put the paper behind it you put it in you thread it from front to back and you have your thread tail and give it a good you know length a good say six you know six to seven inches long now this This gadget here, or this foot here, is called the presser foot. Presser foot. I'm going to leave in the comments section, or in the description rather, I'm going to leave uh, information about the various parts and their names so you can get better acquainted with it. All right, so this is your presser foot. 
the presser foot is lifted and lowered by what we call a presser foot lifter. It's a lever here. Um, I'm going to turn the machine slightly so you can see the lever. This is this is the lever right here, this one. Okay, when you lift it, it lifts the presser foot. You lower it, it lowers the presser foot. Okay, so it's very important to know um, what it does. All right. Okay, so now our top thread is threaded. I lifted the presser foot and I passed the top thread to the back of it. Okay. So that is the top thread, I mean the top part of the machine and how it is threaded. Um, now we go on to the second part, which is the bobbin or the bobbin area. Now, this is the cover for the bobbin. The, the area here where you have all the sewing happening is called the throat plate the throat plate of the machine. You would use your finger uh, um, to just push this black thing backwards and the cover snaps off. If you want to cover or put it back up, you follow this knob here, put it under the metal, small metal plate here, let it go under it, and then you press it down and you close it. Okay, so that's how you open and close the cover. Now, once you open it, you have what is called the bobbin case. The bobbin case. This particular method, or not method, this particular type is called bobbin, drop in bobbin, drop in bobbin case. This is your bobbin. I pre wound some thread on it and I have different color threads so that when we're working with it you can see the difference okay the top thread is red or burgundy and this one is yellow well this is the um, bobbin case and this is the bobbin the bobbin case has certain features that is very, very important. There's a groove right in front, it faces you directly. This groove here that goes down, okay? When you follow that groove, it goes slightly down. And then there's a plate that's covering the bobbin case. So we grab we grab the bobbin, now, how you go in matters. It's not about just grabbing the bobbin and putting it in the case. How you go in matters. You have to go in in a form of a P. Let me explain this. You have, um, if you turn the bobbin with a string on the left, it spells something like a P, like that. If you flip and put it the thread tail on the right is spelled something like a nine or a Q, like this. These two ways impact how your stitches come out. Many times, because people don't know this, when they put, they take the bobbin and they put it right into the machine, um, they just string it any which way. The correct way, you can see I put an X here, which is a wrong way, and this is the right way. Always make sure that your bobbin is oriented in the P format, okay, with the thread tail on the left side of the bobbin. So you grab that and you drop it inside your bobbin case. Once you drop it in, I showed you a groove that faces you, okay? Now, you grab the bottom, sorry, the thread tail, and you make sure that it goes through that groove while you're pressing the bobbin down you let the thread go down through that groove it's a slant a small slant that goes down so you go like that and you follow that slant 
and you keep going till you yank it and you will hear a click okay let me do it again so i'm going you will hear a click okay or feel a click in your hand once you once it clicks it means it's engaged now let me do it again and hopefully you can hear it we go in p format you heard it okay so that click means that it's properly engaged now you grab your top thread turn the hand wheel towards you remember when you turn the hand wheel it brings the needle down turn the hand wheel uh, you know towards you while the needle goes down and watch out for this action where the, bo the bottom thread is grabbed like this this is happening while I'm turning the hand wheel and I turn it so that the needle goes to the highest position, but I don't allow it to come back down. If you keep turning, it will come back down and start sewing. But when it goes all the way up, while you're holding the top thread, it helps the bottom thread to come to the top in the form of a loop. So you can see the loop, the yellow thread out here. This is where you now grab your scissors, your pin, your pen, anything sharp enough to get inside the loop and pull or unravel it. Okay, so this part is very important. So I'm going to go over it again. First, you threaded the top, you let it rest, okay? And then you took your bottom thread, sorry, yeah, bottom thread, which is called a bobbin, with the thread tail on the side, on the left side, like a P. You put it down, and while you're holding it, you lower the thread tail through this groove and click, you hear that click, okay? And then once you hear the click, it means it's engaged. Now you grab the top thread. A lot of times I see people grab the top thread and then they let go of it. Keep holding onto it. Don't pull it, don't leave it, just hold it, the top thread. And turn the hand wheel on the side of the machine towards you. As you turn it towards you, the needle goes down and grabs the bobbin thread. You can see the red thread into acting with the yellow thread. Once the needle is up, it brings the bottom thread to the top, but don't keep turning. Otherwise it will start going back down and start stitching. Once you do this one revolution, in other words, once you turn it towards you and you watch the needle go up, leave it and use the um, the top thread that you're holding, tug it, you know, pull it up like that. And you will see the bottom thread come to the top in the form of a loop. Put your pin or your pen or your, you can use your fingers to unravel this loop like that. That ensures that the full length of the bottom thread comes to the top. And then you push it towards the back through this split over here. Both threads can now sit in the back. Now watch out for this diagonal here. Okay, it is very important. It is the path that the bottom thread follows to go to the top. It goes to the top through this hole over here. Very important. So it creates that diagonal path. If you ever string the bobbin and the top doesn't have this diagonal path, you should be concerned. It means it wasn't properly strung and it might not sew properly for you. Okay, now our bobbin thread is in place. We're going to close the bobbin area. We grab the cover, like I said, you would use your knob, put it under this metal piece here, push it under and press. 
and it's covered, okay? Now you're going to test your threading to make sure that you did a good job with your threading. 